Welcome to a new playlist in the channel, which will be about applications of conformal predictors and what application is better than LLMs to start with. This episode is based on a recent paper that shows an example of how conformal predictors can increase the reliability of LLM applications by quantifying uncertainty in their outputs. Before continuing, I would like to thank the support of the lead author of the paper, Bobish, in preparing this episode. Also, if you are new to conformal predictors or would like a refresher on their details, there is a dedicated playlist on the channel that dives deep into their intricacies. Feel free to check out that playlist before going into the practical applications discussed in the current one. Imagine the task of multiple choice question answering, where we have a question and four possible answers, and the objective is to select the correct answer. There is a benchmark dataset for the task that includes multiple choice questions from different domains ranging from STEM to humanities and medicine. In this episode, our focus is around two key aspects. First, understanding how language models can be used to tackle this task. Second, examining the challenges that arise when LLMs are used without the support of conformal predictors. Let's start by the first one. The first step in using LLMs to answer multiple choice questions is to create a suitable prompt for the model. One way is constructing prompts that include the question itself, followed by a statement specifying the correct answer is option, along with one of the tokens representing possible answers A, B, C, or D. For example, imagine our question is this. The four distinct prompts corresponding to the question will be prompt A, prompt B, C, and finally prompt D. This particular method of prompting is known as zero-shot prompting because it intentionally withholds exposure to any correct answers during the prompt construction process. If we want to assist the model a little bit, we can employ a more sophisticated prompting approach. For example, imagine that we want the model to answer the same question. We can add the following information to the prompt. First, we explicitly specify the field to which the question belongs. Second, we incorporate an example question from that field, along with its correct answer. Third, we explicitly instruct the model to assume it is an expert in that particular topic. Finally, just like with zero-shot prompting, we include tokens representing each of the four potential answers. This technique, known as one-shot prompting, provides additional context. In essence, employing one-shot prompting results in prompts that consist of a static, shared component which remains the same across questions within a given topic, and the dynamic part that encompasses the specific question at hand and the tokens corresponding to the four possible answers. Once four distinct one-shot prompts for each question are engineered, they are input to the model to obtain their respective logit scores. To make these scores interpretable, the softmax function converts them into so-called probabilities. These probabilities represent the model's estimation of the likelihood that each answer is the correct one. With these so-called probabilities in hand, we can easily identify the answer with the highest probability as the model's top choice for the question. The answer with the second highest probability 
is designated as the model's second choice, and so on. Once we have these probabilities, we can construct various prediction sets to represent our model's final output. For instance, we can create a prediction set containing only the model's top choice, which we will refer to as the top one prediction set. But we can go further by providing more options for potential answers. In addition to the top choice, we can also include the model's second choice in the prediction set, which we will term the top two prediction set. We can even extend this to include the model's third choice forming the top three prediction set. This approach allows us to generate different prediction sets for each question we want the model to answer. For example, if we have 100 questions, we will produce 100 top 1 and 100 top 2 prediction sets. Now that we have generated these prediction sets, the next question is how to evaluate their accuracy, where accuracy is determined by whether a set contains the corresponding actually correct answer. To do this, we introduce metrics called coverages. Let's discuss this first for the top one prediction sets. Recall that if there are n questions in our dataset, the model will give us n top one prediction sets, one for each question. Top one coverage is the fraction of those sets for which the set contains the corresponding correct answer. Expressing this in pseudo-mathematical notation, we get the following relation. For example, if we have 100 questions resulting in 100 top 1 prediction sets, a coverage of 90% means that 90 of those 100 sets contain the actual answer. Similarly, coverage for the top 2 prediction sets represent the fraction of questions where these sets contain the actual answer. Obviously, top 2 coverage will always be higher than top 1, and similarly, top 3 coverage will always be higher than top 2 coverage. Let's summarize our progress so far. Our objective is to leverage large language models for multiple choice question answering. We are exploring this task within the context of a comprehensive data set containing multiple choice questions from various fields. Our one-shot prompts consist of different parts, the question to be answered, the field of the question, an illustrative sample question from that field along with its answer, the part that asks the model to assume it's an expert in the field, and a single token A, B, C, or D representing potential answer choices. We feed in the prompt the model to get the probability of each choice being the correct answer. Based on these probabilities, we construct top 1, top 2, or top 3 prediction sets that contain models top n choices as the correct answer. We can then evaluate these predicted sets by calculating coverages that show the fraction of questions for which the sets contain the correct answer. Now, let's use the large language model LAMA by META for this task. If you are interested in reproducing the results I am about to show, or those mentioned in the paper, you can access the Hugging Face open source version of the model called OpenLAMA, which unlike the original version by Meta, requires no form filling or approvals. Let's begin by examining the performance on the topic of college chemistry, which the paper has shown to be one of the most challenging ones for the model. The model's performance in this topic is quite poor, with top 1, top 2 and top 3 coverages hovering around 25 50 and 75 percent respectively. This means that the model's performance is similar to randomly selecting one, two or three choices 
out of the four available options. But this low performance is not really the primary concern. Let's in fact switch to the topic of marketing, which the paper shows the model has the best performance on, with top one coverage of about 70%. The more concerning issue in using LLMs as they are, especially in high stakes applications, is that there are no predefined guarantees regarding the error rate. In other words, the error rates are entirely unpredictable and the user has no clue whatsoever what they may be. These errors may be 10%, 50% or 90%, which makes it difficult for the user to rely on those models. This is where conformal predictors can play a crucial role. Imagine the value of allowing users to define their acceptable error tolerance, whether 10 or 20%, and having our application dynamically adjust for each question the number of choices to be included in the prediction set so that those user-defined error tolerances are met. Imagine also the value of being able to do that in a simple post-processing step without having to worry about the inner workings of the language model. This dynamic adaptation of choices in the prediction set by an application itself is in contrast to what we did in the current episode where we predefined and fixed the number of choices in the prediction set. The dynamic adaptation enabled by conformal predictors will allow our LLM-based application to adjust the size of the prediction set depending on the difficulty of the question. For example, if a question is particularly difficult, the prediction set will include three or even four choices, which is a clear signal that the model lacks confidence in its predictions for that particular question. In other words, the size of a prediction set for a question can be viewed as a measure of the model's uncertainty of its answer to that question. That power of conformal predictors added to LLMs is certainly not limited to multiple choice question answering and will be extremely valuable anywhere where LLM-based applications are used to make decisions. We will discuss this further in the upcoming episodes. Until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.